right, my fifth and sixth grade students, I'm going to be going over our sub-yearly vocab check-in. And I do this at the very beginning of the year to kind of see where we're at, if we know or remember any of these words we've talked about when we are in elementary, uh, all the way up through the end of the year. So this is the same, uh, same assessment I'm using for everyone to see um, if we're learning or retaining what we're learning in our class. So let me go over this. It could be the very first time you're seeing this video. It could be the third time you're seeing this video, but either way, these are still the answers I'm looking for, all right? So each of these images should look very familiar because those are the images we're using for the actual bell ringer. So I did that, so hopefully it uh, kind of helped spark that memory and what we were talking about for that image, for that word, all right? So the very first one here is about lines. Um, this is a Jackson Pollock piece, and what I was looking for is something about the, the use of like free-flowing lines or organic lines, or um, some people use like scribbly lines. But if you could describe the types of lines you're seeing, some people talked about their diagonal lines and vertical lines, and they talked about the lines, which is great. So I'm looking for this extra vocabulary. If you just said there are lines, I want a little bit more, okay? So that's the main thing for lines is that you're actually talking about the types of lines. Um, for this Picasso piece, we talked about shape. And again, I'm looking for more than there are shapes. I am looking for there are geometric shapes, which is very straight edges and angles. That's kind of what we talked about with line two for the different types of line. So if you could have said they are geometric shapes, or maybe you could name some of them, like triangles, rectangles, squares. If you can talk about the shapes, that is helpful, okay? Um, next is movement. This is a tricky one. Um, the way I can really know you know what movement is, if you talk about how your actual eyes are moving around this part. So if you could say, my eyes start at the top and move towards the bottom, and that's why this piece has movement, that is what I'm looking for. A lot of people talk about, yes, it looks like it has movement, but you weren't able to tell me how. So if you just talk about what your eyes are doing, my eyes are moving around this painting because these lines make my eyes start at the top and look down, or start in the corner and work my way diagonally. Um, Talk about how your eyes are moving, okay? Um, next up is color. A lot of us know color pretty well, but you didn't get detailed enough. So talk about the colors you see. You could say instead of the blue sky or green grass, there is red everywhere and the red makes me feel blank. So the color helps change the mood of a painting very often. Um, but otherwise, if you could talk about the colors white, black, brown, green, there's a lot of colors. So if you could talk about them, that makes me know you know what colors are. All right. Value is the lightness and darkness of a color. So I'm really looking for you able to tell me where the lightest value is, which would be that lantern or that light hanging above the table, and where the dark, darker values are. Um, for this one, a lot of people would talk about only the light and light is value but light's only part of value light and darkness go together for value okay so if you're able to talk about both of those things that helps me know you know what value is okay um contrast i had a lot of people getting this one so that's good um contrast is when there's two opposite or different elements in a piece that are different from each other so if you talked about light color versus dark color that would be great. Or if you talked about the direction of lines or being either vertical or more horizontal, that has contrast too. So if you're able to talk about the two very different things in this painting, that shows that you know what contrast is. Emphasis, I was really excited to see a lot of people are getting emphasis this year. It's that first thing that catches your attention. So if you just say her face, that's not enough. You have to say her face has emphasis because it's the first thing I see. Or because the back room, background is dark and her face is light, okay? these A lot of times to talk about emphasis, you're talking about contrast or value. You need other words to have emphasis, okay? So if you could even use a few extra words, that would be awesome. Now, unity. People have a lot of trouble remembering this one, and it's very, very simple. Unity is feeling united, finished, and complete. So when you see a painting or a piece of art, 
you could say, wow, that really looks like it's a united piece. It has a unity. It's just you saying that it looks finished, it looks done, it looks complete. So people were saying how the houses are stuck together makes it have unity, which isn't necessarily true because you don't have to have buildings close together to have unity in a piece of art. So if you could just talk about this piece feels like a finished, complete, balanced, happy piece, okay? It has unity, it feels finished, okay? Um, pattern people are getting the hang of it. If you talk about the soup can is a repeated element making a pattern, you got it. All right, pattern we've been doing since we're very young, so hopefully this one was a easier than a lot of the other ones. A repeated thing. Um, rhythm after that, I need you to be specific, because if you say there's a floating man everywhere, that doesn't mean rhythm. What I'm looking for with rhythm are those differences. So if you said the men are facing different directions or the men are bigger or smaller, but they're repeated like a pattern, then you're good. But you need to talk about how they are different because sometimes people just said there's men falling everywhere, but that's not what I'm looking for. Okay, gotta be specific. Um, space was tricky for some folks too because they said it looks like there's space. Well, yes, it looks like there's space, but why? Okay, this is why we get into these in the bell ringers, all right? So I need you to really talk about like the background, like what's in the back and what's in the foreground, what's in the front. So if you can talk about there are people in like the foreground and you can even say mid-ground because there's a middle area between them too, right? I can say there's a sky in the background. The more you can describe what's in this space and where in this space I know. So if you just say there's people in the space, you're right, but can you be more specific so I know you're talking about the same space that I'm seeing or thinking of, okay? Try to use those extra vocabulary words for that. For balance, we're talking about if a piece is visually balanced, okay? So that's when we were just talking about symmetrical, where it's the same balance, it's even on both sides, there's two people, two people, or it'd be asymmetrical, where there's four people, hint, hint, this is asymmetrical, and zero people, it feels heavier, okay? So if you're able to mention it doesn't have balance or is asymmetrical, that's the word I'm looking for, asymmetrical, because there's a lot happening on one side versus the other. That's what I'm looking for, all right? Um, again, on to our last two here. We have a texture, and this is something we talk about when we're young, but you have to be able to put into words how something feels, okay? You could say it feels lumpy, bumpy, jagged, fluffy, wavy. If you can describe with words how something feels, like you can look at the clouds here and say, oh, and those look kind of jaggedy or rough, or maybe the plants look soft and silky, okay? Use some of these good adjectives to describe how it feels, okay? If you just say it looks nice, that's not quite what we're going for here, all right? And our last one is kind of special because it's moving, right? And the reason why it's moving is because this is about form. Form literally just means it is a three-dimensional object. So this is a sculpture. So if you mention this sculpture, you're already on the right track, but this sculpture has the form of a headless angel or headless winged person or a, a weird thing that looks like it's flying. Mentioning that it is a sculpture will get you those points, okay? And again, yeah, it's moving. You should be able to walk around this whole sculpture in real life, all right? So those are our four vocab words that we talk about throughout the year and we use to describe our art. We talk about them for Art Sonia. We get really into that. So my goal, first time you take this quiz or this check-in, maybe you don't know a lot of these words, but by hopefully the end of the year, we know most of them, if not all of them, and are able to show this, all right? Say, so usually I have a pretty good jump route between each step, so hopefully by the end we're already on the right track, and then sixth grade comes along, and it's a real easy because you remember all of them, all right? So um, that was our review for our vocabulary check-ins. If you maybe are thinking or bored or want to check in again before vocab test, this would be a great thing you to watch, all right? Um, I will see you around and hopefully next time around we do this, we'll be rocking it. All right. Have a great day.